What is your accidentally caught your spouse cheating horror story? Story one. I was at Disney with our kids. Day two of a seven-day family trip her father had been, by that point, talking up for about seven years. He and her mother told us when the kids were born, they were going to take us all to Disney when they turned seven. And seven years later, it finally happened. At that point, we'd been together for over a decade, had a great job, a house, bunch of kids, and the full-on 100% honest-to-goodness American dream. Life was grand. Until I picked up her phone to set an alarm on night two of our family vacation of a lifetime. There were so many texts, so many. I remember actually wanting to hurt her and having to leave the room. I immediately called the number and heard some flipping strange dude answer with a sleepy, Hello, darling. I'm glad to hear from you. I wanted to pass away. The sense of unreality that I experienced, it was immediately numbing. Like I'd just switched to the dark timeline. All I could think was, from this point on, everything that I have known about my left is going to change. Story two, obligatory, not me, but a friend. And I've posted this story twice before. Early 2000s, my friend's husband was deployed to Iraq. Together, they had a 10-year-old son and a happy marriage. One day, while he was deployed, I'm at home when another one of our friends calls and screams, holy cow, turn on the news right now. I turn it on to watch a human interest story about a fundraiser at a high school 30 miles away. They're doing Relay for Life or something, and as a surprise to one of the participants, they had her husband and father of her two grade school children do a video call from Iraq and displayed it on the football jumbotron. There on our local news is my friend's husband, telling another woman and two kids how he loves them and can't wait to get back home to them. The news eats it up about what a great guy he is. That night, our group of friends convened and decided how we would tell her. I was nominated, so the next day I had to sit her down and tell her what we saw. She called the news station, and they were happy to let her come in and watch the story. They were also incredibly apologetic. The story has a somewhat crappy ending, I'm afraid. She called him out on his BS, they started divorce proceedings, and he went on to legally marry the mother of his other kids, and mostly ignored his son from the first marriage. Story 3. Dating this girl a few years back, and I became really good friends with her brother, just because he appreciated my help during a difficult time for their family. Their father had abruptly passed away. Two years into the relationship, the brother contacts me and asks to meet up for coffee in a serious conversation. Apparently, he caught his own sister with another guy, mutual friend of ours, and this cow had been going on for like a year. As soon as he found out, I was told, broke up with her. Still friends with her brother, go figure. Edit, if I was boy, I'd date him. Everyone happy? Haha. <laughs> Thanks for all the love. Story four, caught my now ex-husband. Something was way off. I was six months pregnant with our second child, and my best friend at the time was also off. Picked up his phone at 2 a.m. when it went off and found a secret password locked messenger. Go messenger. Password was his birthday. Real winner. I found over 7K messages along with photos, some insinuating I was present with either one of them while they were messaging. I was upset and woke him up. He locked himself in the bathroom and pulled the attempted suicide card. There's another year of trying to work it out shenanigans after this incident, but I'm so glad that chapter in my life had over. Edit, added, attempted. Story 5. Me and my girlfriend were long distance, and she had a habit of going quiet sometimes. She'd been texting me for the last few weeks, but had made excuses not to come visit. I went to a party that my friend had organized. I met a friend of his who told me he had a new girlfriend. I was surprised he hadn't mentioned her, so I asked who she was. This lady introduced me to my girlfriend. She would told everyone that we broke up and had been dating my friend for about a month. She didn't bother to tell me. Edit, I posted this, went to bed, and didn't expect it to be so popular. I'll try and reply, explain today. Story 6. One of my former co-workers loaded in an SD card with a scanned project file on it. He put it into the conference room PC. We were treated to pics of his wife flipping another guy. We were just stunned. This was in a senior budgetary meeting with the outside accountants and auditors. And he was sitting right there, and we were looking at his wife and another guy going at it. I reached over and shut the projector off. Nobody said anything. He got up and walked out and drove off in his car, left his phone and laptop sitting on the table. He wound up driving to his parents' house, three states away. He was gone for a week. Story 7. Had my suspicions for a couple months, but no evidence or anything. My ex lived about 40 miles from me, and we were 18. Dated and went to high school together for three years. She would come down into the city on weekends to spend time with me. I knew she had another group of friends in her town, and a few were guys which didn't bother me. But I woke up in the middle of the night and messaged her on Facebook, only to notice she had been tagged in a photo with one of her friends. He was holding her up and kissing her. It was his new profile picture. I messaged the guy and calmly asked what was going on. He immediately responded and was confused. We decided to meet up for coffee the next morning that my ex was over. And the look on her face was priceless when she saw him walk in and sit beside me. She begged for our forgiveness and claimed she loved us both. Turned out it had been going on for seven months. And that every time she left my place during the weekends, she was returning home to him for the week. 
Me and the other guy are now best friends and share a house with my fiance and his girlfriend. Fudge you, Taylor. Story eight. I found out my ex-boyfriend, dated from 15, 18, had been cheating on me when upon walking into the apartment he shared with his mother and two elementary age sisters, the youngest sister asked me, when did you leave? I asked her, when was I here? She responded, you were here all night. I could hear you talking to X's name. I'd not been there for two days at that point. I asked him what she was talking about and he blew bubbles for a few minutes before confessing. Good riddance. Edit. Not sure if everyone knows blue bubbles means having nothing to say yet still talking. It may be local slang. Yes, though, I do think the joke is funny. Story nine. One day my husband was getting ready for work and I saw him packing his GoPro case so he could take it to work. I thought, hmm, that's weird. Why would he be taking it to work? So when he jumped into the shower, I replaced his GoPro with mine and thought I'd look through the files when he leaves for work. My suspicions were on alert because he had just taken a trip to the PI with some friends. A guy's only weekend kind of thing. Fire up the camera and found three videos. Lo and behold, there he is in all his glory, barebacking a Filipino prostitute, looking and posing for the camera like he's some flipping censored photo star. I was enraged, but also looking at this fool, acting like he's a flipping adult film star, was hilarious. Story 10. I met this girl who was working the late shift at a candy store. We'd flirted a few times, eventually exchanged numbers, and started sleeping together. After a few weeks, she invited me to go drinking at this crappy little bar she liked in the north side of the city. So we spend the night dancing together, drinking, and talking to people she knows. Eventually, a guy comes up to me saying, Great to meet you finally. Congratulations on the engagement. What are you talking about? I replied laughing as I choked on my drink a bit. Guy gives me a quizzical look and says, you're here with Corey. It's Paul, right? I raised an eyebrow and pointed a thumb to my chest, stating, nah, man, name's Kyle. We stared at each other, watching each other realize what was playing out on this faithful night. Corey was engaged to a guy named Paul. I was the other guy. Paul worked out of town for weeks at a time. It was actually interesting how you literally could see the word travel around the small bar, drastically changing the vibe in the room. We left shortly after. She brought me, the guy she was cheating on her fiancé with, to her favorite bar. She brought me to a place full of friends that at least knew her well enough to know she was engaged to a guy named Paul, not Kyle. Messed up stuff. Didn't see her again after that. According to Facebook, Paul and Corey are currently married. Story 11. Went home and my husband wasn't home, which was weird for him at 8 p.m. when an hour earlier he had told me he was going home. Had a gut feeling, went to one of our female friends, who he claimed was like a sister apartment. His truck is there. I knock. No answer. Try the door. It's unlocked. Walk into the living room. Nobody there. Hear noises in the bedroom. Walk in and lo and behold, there they are. Tried to make it work over next couple of months, but I can't get past it. Didn't even want him to touch me. Divorce four years ago. Edit. Our female friend. This was a mutual friend who we had both known for years, went to HS with, etc. Story 12. Things had been a little shaky as I was working a lot and felt sapped when she wanted to go be social with friends, so I often stayed home. I wanted to do something nice for her for Valentine's Day, so I sent her friend a text asking if there was something that she may have mentioned she would like to do. As I was waiting on that text, I was in another room. I saw her phone buzz with her friend's name. The number was below the name, and since I had just sent her a text, I knew they didn't match. There are very few times my blood has been that cold and feelings of dread. I called the number with my phone, and it rang and rang before going to voicemail. Needless to say, it was the other guy. I confronted her about it, and she said she was waiting to leave and had a bag packed in case I found out. She had no intentions of trying to work things out, so a month later she had moved out. I made a decision then that I could be broken up and miserable, or that I could choose to be happy and be open to a relationship if it was available. I've since remarried and have two beautiful boys with my amazing wife. Despite the trash and horror in these stories, there is always an opportunity to be happy. If you're reading this thread because it happened to you, or just from morbid curiosity, choose to be happy. Be the person that you can be proud of and move on to better things. Story 13. My ex-wife was an alcoholic, like, bad alcoholic. One time I get home from my night shift a little early, and you guessed it, she was drunk. Well, I was horny, and she's usually drunk when we fudge anyway, so what the hell, I came on to her. So we're flipping, and it's dark, and she says, you need to hurry up. So I ask, uh, why? He's going to be home soon. Uh, who? My husband, you flipping idiot. Yeah. So I pull out and hop out of the bed and flip on the light, and this bad person looks absolutely baffled. She's cow face drunk and totally dumbfounded. I ask her, who did you think was flipping you? What? Who did you think was flipping you? What are you talking about? Never mind. I'll talk to you about it in the morning. I'm not drunk. Yeah, she didn't even know what the fudge I was on about. So I go to bed on the couch and I'm sitting there going over cow in my head and I hear her come down the stairs. She goes into the kitchen and I hear a drawer shut. A few seconds later, she's standing over me with a flipping knife. I promptly take the knife from her. Tell her to go to bed. 
which she obliges without saying a single word. I grab the kids and put them in the car and drive to my mom's house where we spend the night. She starts blowing up my phone at 10 a.m., frantic that she doesn't know where the kids are. We have a mini intervention. She promises to go to AA. I attempt to erase the entire night from my memory, which didn't work, obviously. Arr. About a month later, she hasn't held up to her AA agreement and has pretty much gone back to her old ways. I come home from work, and I see a flipping L.A. Dodgers hat on my couch. Uh, who was over? I ask. Nobody. Are you sure? Yeah. Don't flipping nonsense me. Who was over here? Are you calling me a flipping liar? Yeah. I am. Because someone left their flipping hat on my flipping couch. At this point, she concocts some stupid story about a neighbor coming to borrow something. I knew she was lying. At this point, I had pretty much given up on the marriage but didn't know what to do. I was afraid that if I divorced her, she'd somehow get the kids. Uh -oh. A lot more messed up up cow happens over the next month or so, including her making up a story about Mexicans jumping her, my neighbor calling CPS, me catching her actually kiss a guy, two potheads admitting to having a close relationship with her. Then one day in July of 2008, I asked her to have a seat. I told her that I was filing for divorce. She put up a fight, but I won full custody of my kids. I started dating again and have been with my new wife for nine years now. The end. Edit. Please note that she did recognize me and was receptive when we started. Drunk close relationship was the norm for her. I wasn't being a creep. Story 14. This just happened two days ago. I was in Florida on vacation with my girlfriend of six years, our four-year-old son and her family and a few of her friends. She had been taking pictures down at the beach all afternoon on her phone. We got back to the house we were staying at and everyone was in the kitchen making dinner. I picked up her phone and opened it up to text my family the pictures she had taken. As I'm scrolling for the thread, I see her ex-boyfriend's name. Open up the messages and first thing there are videos of them they had sent to each other. I yelled, what the fudge is this? Her mom turned toward me and asked what was wrong and I loudly proclaimed what I'd seen. She said that she had gone out with some friends, gotten drunk, invited him out for a drink and ended up blowing cola all night. Then said she got blackout drunk the next night and sent the videos. Claimed that was the only time she'd seen him. Yeah, so when she fell asleep, of course, I went through her phone again. She'd seen him multiple times throughout the previous two months. And I found pictures of them together, posing like a cutesy couple on their dates. Her brother and dad were pissed. I got the fudge out of there the next morning. Ruined the vacation for pretty much everyone and totally wrecked our family. Story 15. Not me, my dad. He told me the story a few years back. So, some of my mom's family were visiting from out of town, and they had planned a night at the bingo, which my dad couldn't attend because he was working 6 p.m. to a.m. He finished work early and on his way home, saw my babysitter on the street. You are not with you slash Bassman 1976? No, your wife called me at around saying she wasn't feeling well and that she would stay home. My dad drove home, tried the front door. Locked, no lights. He entered the house by the basement door, went up the stairs, heard them a few feet away. My mom and her cousin. Two years later, he almost left her, with me in tow, but stayed so I could have a normal life. Most of the time, I wish he'd left because he wouldn't have worked 90, 100 a week to avoid being home and could have been happier. For those who are wondering, my mom had a long time affair with her cousin, starting before she met my dad. She wasn't happy either, I think, but my dad was a good catch. Yes, I'm sure he's my dad. We look so much the same. Yes, they are still together. And after a year of being angry, I decided to let go because their relationship has nothing to do with me. Just sad for both of them. Story 16. Using an alt account because duh. Wife had been texting a lot and was very evasive when I inquired about it, though she smirked when she thought it was making me jealous. Yeah, she's that kind of person. Turns out she'd left her email logged into my cell phone. So I noticed that she had a weekend Airbnb trip to a place that was a state away. We were living in different states at the time that seemed to be of the quiet, romantic getaway type. Total occupancy, two. Hmm, well, I thought that was fairly suspicious. So I monitored her Airbnb page, which was easy since we were friends on Airbnb, figuring that the owner might leave a comment about how great she was as a guest, which it turned out she did. Except the review went something like, wife's name and guy not named me were wonderful guests and so on. Yeah, so anyone want to guess what the conditional probability is of that weekend trip involving infidelity? Pretty sure it's high. Wife apparently panicked, asked Airbnb to remove the review, altered her name on the site, a... Eh? And then finally, having failed to get the review taken down, deleted her account. I eventually asked her about it during a counseling session, and she had a ready-made defense about how she'd meant to take the trip with another coworker. But that person's car broke down, so Guy's name. Ended up tagging along since Guy's name was that coworker's boyfriend, and they all stayed there together, but Guy's name signed the guest book. Hence a totally honest mistake. In hindsight, I'm pretty sure she was not telling the truth. We are not still married. Story 17. 
Not me, but one of my best mates. His girlfriend snuck a guy into their one-bedroom apartment whilst he was playing Xbox in the living room. I heard the argument through the mic after he heard a noise coming from the bedroom. He kicked her out and continued playing with us edit. All righty, this certainly blew up. To the people saying my buddy deserved it because he is addicted to video games. I don't know where you got that from. He only plays when there is a bit of spare time. She's just a cow person. After he caught them in the act and kicked her out, he came back onto the mic to tell us what happened and to get off the game. We encouraged him to stay on and talk everything through with us. We were in different countries at the time and couldn't see him in person because we were worried. Their relationship had been a little rocky, but who would guess that someone would cheat, and especially in the next room? He's a great guy who did not deserve that happened to him. He is now in a healthy relationship with a wonderful lady. Story 18. Not mine, but my brother. He was at a small party with two friends and his wife. He got tired and wanted to head home. His wife stayed behind. She gave some lame excuse and begged off going with him. It was all right, he thought. His best buddy was there and would make sure she got home safe for him. He got in his car, pulled out of the driveway. Before he could get on down the block, he checked his rear view and noticed the room in the house they were all in had gone dark. He'd suspected for a time something was up with her. They had a child together. She passed away at the sitter. It was ruled Sid's. She had grown colder in the months after the baby passed away. He never really thought anything like what he was about to see was actually possible. It was more a deep-seated feeling that something was up, but she never let him in, and they didn't work through the loss together. Seeing the lights out crystallized the situation for him, and he turned right around. The house was dark. The front door was still unlocked. He walked right in and to the only room with any light. He opened the door to find his best friend and another acquaintance double-teaming his soon-to-be ex. He hasn't really been the same since... Story 19. Two weeks ago, I sent a message to a mutual friend asking to borrow a router. He didn't answer, but no worries he lives nearby. I'll just stop by and grab it. I pull up to his house and start heading down the driveway. He has a long country driveway, so it's a few seconds before I see my car. I drive a company vehicle during the day, already there. My heart began to sink, but they are friends and business partners. Maybe it's nothing. I got out of my van and look up to see the other guy shirtless in his bedroom. At this point, my heart is down on my stomach and I'm visibly shaking. I go in and immediately head upstairs. He is alone, now clothed. I say, I came to borrow the router. Also, have you seen my wife? The car is here? He then proceeds to give the worst improve I've ever heard. Huh? No, she was here at some point, though. Whatever I knew she was there, I just wanted him to admit it. I go down, take the router, and head back to the van where I finally encounter my wife topless, trying to sneak around the side of his house. And now here I am, edit. To all those wondering, I kept the router. Edit 2. It's a plunge router for woodworking. Story 20. Was on a very rare date night. Kids at the grandparents' house. I'm looking extra cute, so didn't even want to carry a purse or my cell. Used his phone on the way to the restaurant to confirm our reservations. After eating, used his phone again to get the movie times via text. Saw a name in the frequently sent. Asked him innocently, who is Lisa? He snatched the phone and said, my co-worker. FF three hours later and I'm throwing his clothes into his car after going online and viewing the hundreds of texts sent to several women. But still, I was a fool for love and opted to stay. I was with him my entire adult life, so I didn't know anything different. That was 2006. We had our 19th anniversary in January. My divorce was final in March. He got married to another one of his many affairs in June. I'm enjoying being unattached and becoming an empty nester as of this fall. Story 21? I opened my sister's door to ask for a hair tie, and she was flipping my BF. This was in high school, but still, I spit on them, yelled why, and went downstairs to leave. My dad is in the living room on the computer and asks what's wrong. I say, go upstairs and see for yourself. I ran outside and heard the yelling right away. My dad chased him out of the neighborhood. She got shipped to my mom's house shortly after that and got pregnant at 17 hours old. Edit, whoa. Didn't expect anyone to actually see that. This was just the start with her, to answer some questions. I asked why later, and he said he did it because she would have close relationship, and I wouldn't. I was still a virgin, and she was sex alley active at 12. No, I never spoke to him again. He's actually a meth head now. She slept with another one of my boyfriends a year later. Another one. I found them kissing on our front porch one day after grade 12. Fast forward to me being fresh out of high school, full-time job that I loved. She's knocked up with number two. And my dad made me quit my job and move in with her to watch my one-year-old niece so she could finish high school. She does. Then has their baby and is too lazy to raise either, so I do for a year. I finally say enough. I didn't want to leave my niece and nephew, but I was a kid and wanting my own life and not to live in her apartment with her new boyfriend and two kids. I move back home and start new. My nephew's father ends up getting custody. She didn't try to fight and didn't show up to three different court dates to try and win him back at all. So she takes my niece and splits up north to hide in our hometown. By now, my niece is three, and from up until now, she turns 18 on the 9th, she has lived in four different provinces and Florida twice. My sister has ran all over the country, going through probably around 100 men. 
She's been engaged more than I can count. Back to me. When I moved back home, got my life back together in my own place about a year later, who comes knocking at the door? My sis and niece. Can we stay for a bit? Of course, you're my sister. She fudged my roommate, doesn't take care of my niece. She's getting high and whatnot. My niece gets smoked in the head by one of the guys she's hanging around with, with a golf club. I take her for stitches, tell her to go back home and stay there. She does, thankfully. She cleans herself up a bit and goes to college. Fast forward to me getting married and having my own two kids. She comes to visit with her fiancé and my niece. She was now six. And I catch sis trying to blow my husband. Goodbye for another two years and eventually goodbye to the husband, too. That's a whole other issue, the jerk. Fast forward again, and I'm with my first kiss from 13. My soulmate, Barf, and unbeknownst to me, he has a drinking problem. She takes advantage of that. She has admitted in the past, when I've asked why she keeps doing this to me, that she can't stand that I've always been successful and happy. So she tries to ruin it or take it away and starts sixting my boyfriend. They texted for a few days and feels bad, I read them. And that was that. He did cheat with other women, but was also blackout drunk for the better part of two wires. He quit, has been sober since December 12th, 2014. Different man. Amazing man and father, my sister on the other hand. I finally had enough, and at our little sister's wedding, right at the end, I told her to never call me, message me, or try to reach me. Forget I'm her sister because she's never treated me as such. We haven't spoken since then. That was 2013. She's still the same. My niece gets no attention. My mom has basically raised her when she's been close to them to take care of her. She comes to our house a lot, too. My sister is too busy worrying about this man or the next. Too busy getting stoned, I'm not against smoking a joint, and too busy with her own life. She should never have been a mother. Story 22. A professor at my college accidentally posted handwritten letters from, or to, his mistress on his class's website today. His wife is also a professor at my college. Wonder how that one's playing out this evening. Yikes. Edit. I will update if possible. One of my friends actually read the letters today, since clearly some students saved them and they started circulating. I'll have to ask her about more details. No clue how the mix-up happened, but I really feel for his wife. Not a fun way to find out, and not fun to have it broadcasted on campus either. Edit 2. Texted my friend who read the letters. This is what she said. Yeah, it was crazy. It was about men and women and their relationship with close relationship. And it was pretty stereotypical and like psychological IDK, how to explain it. And there was a flowchart in it basically explaining how to handle him regarding close relationship. Apparently, the letter was cringe city. Edit 3. While a lot of you want to see the letters, I do not have them and wouldn't share the screenshots anyways. Something about that is against my moral compass, but glad you were all entertained as much as I was. I found it funny this question was asked right after I heard about this, so I just had to post. Probably one of the more shocking twists was that this professor is actually quite young, early 30s, it looks like. I totally envisioned this being an old dude. Story 23. We were high school sweethearts and had been together about seven years. We went to college together, worked together, basically spent 20 hours a day together. I left for the military and never got a single letter from her or heard anything about her from my mom, the only person who did write me. Somewhere in the first two weeks out of 13, I came to the conclusion that she'd passed away and people were sparing me the stress while I was in boot camp. I'm floored when I see her at graduation. She seemed cold and distant, but she'd also recently gotten over a substance issue, or so I thought. I stayed with her for 10 days before leaving for training instead of staying with my mom and I hardly see her. She says she is working two jobs and going to school. I try to be understanding and supportive, but she also didn't come home one night. We part on weird terms, but she assures me she's just sad to see me go. I'm a couple weeks into training, and my family and girlfriend drive to see me. We have a really good three-day visit, and when they're dropping me off, I get a phone call from a good friend I'd known for years. He tells me how sorry he is. She had told him that I broke up with her when I left, so I could have guilt-free, casual, close relationship, which was what I always wanted. He told me her sister found out we were still together from a text she had seen. He was so apologetic, and I thought he was a piece of cow before, but that was the behavior of a stand-up guy. She denied, denied, denied. This was a real poor move on my part, but I pulled the text from our shared account, back when you could do that. But I justified it because her new boyfriend had already offered to send them to me. With text in hand, she still denied it. We both moved on, and she's married to him now. Story 24. I've posted about this before, but he changed his phone password. I left it for months until something just wasn't sitting right in my gut. I unlocked his phone with my thumb, and I didn't even have to look. There was a messaging app open with a girl he was meeting the next day. I sent him to work without confronting him. I reset passwords through a long chain of emails to finally access the one associated with the messaging app. Lo and behold, he was sending approximately 10,000 emails per year for the last four years of our relationship. He was living a whole second life and hiding it from everyone. Our relationship had never appeared stronger, and we had been seeing a therapist to work on strengthening our communication for eight months, once a week. Clearly, he was hiding his issues from the therapist as well. At the time, 
I felt like it ruined my life. I remember thinking very clearly, what did I do to deserve this? When I thought that something inside of me just snapped, I calmly went and bought a giant coffee and cardboard boxes. I packed all his things up before he was home from work and changed our locks. The end. Edit. People are asking. I moved his things into storage and left the key along with the passive aggressive notes. He left me a short note apologizing for what he did and owning up to it. He made a social media post telling everyone what he did and asked they leave him alone and support me. I saw him weeks later to talk, and he didn't try hide what he had done and transparent. I loved him, and if he had came to me and admitted he had this problem, I would have helped him seek therapy. It wasn't the subject matter so much that is the issue. An addiction is an addiction. It's the lying. Story 25. Not a spouse, but college boyfriend. Our relationship had started to feel a bit strained, and he asked if I could come over to talk. He lived nearby, and as I was walking over, I thought to myself, Whatever he wants to talk about, I can handle it, as long as he's not cheating on me and isn't breaking up with me. So I decided to just start off with that. In my mind, I was going to ask, did you cheat on me? Are we about to break up? And he would say, of course not. And then we'd go from there and we'd work whatever it was out. I walked in, said, did you cheat on me? And his face immediately fell. So conversation didn't really go how either of us planned. Story 26. Not me, but a close friend had an affair with another close friend and got caught because she lost an earring in the bed. After the entire blowout of a friend group and lots of shaming on both of them, she says he assaulted her, and everyone is stunned, and doesn't know what to do. So to prove he didn't assault her, he had to show his wife in the police home security footage of the woman ridding him like a horse while he was handcuffed. So he cheated, then was accused of assault, and got to top it off by showing his wife a close relationship tape with another woman edit. We didn't all instantly start calling the woman a liar. We didn't have time to process a lifelong friend being a before it was set straight and she started backpedaling. Please stop personal messaging me that I'm an unpleasant person and didn't believe her. Story 27, not spouse, but significant other. We lived in one city, not living together. A mutual friend posted on Facebook how happy she was to see him and other women in other city over the weekend. I messaged her and asked if she could confirm my suspicions. She said she didn't realize he and I were still together and apologized for the post. I thanked her. She told me that he and this other woman have been together for three years now. I was dating him for one. I texted him and asked what was up. He said it was a business trip. I called him out. He asked if we could meet up when he's back in the city because he doesn't want to defend himself over the phone. I told him to either talk to me over the phone or he's never seeing or hearing from me again. It's been almost a year. Story 28 had a weird sinking feeling that something wasn't right with the new friend from college. Opened his phone after he randomly changed the lock screen. He gave me the password drunk and saw all the notes. They were kind of odd, so I confronted him, only to be told I'm crazy and it's nothing. Went to work and messaged her on Facebook, since I now knew her name. Turns out he said I was away in the hospital and was pretending to date me for my mental health and that they could date for real. We both confronted him. She decides to date him again and slanders me. Just found out he cheated on her, though, which is some sweet justice. Story 29. Not me, but my neighbor, who is also my best friend. He was having his 30th birthday party and a bunch of people were over at his condo. He was intoxicated. A solid seven-tenths intoxicated and spilled his beer on his shirt, so he decided to change shirts. He asked me to come with him because he wanted to ask me something in private, so I went with him upstairs. He opened his bedroom door, and we saw his boss going to town on his fiance. I will never forget the look on his face, his fiance's face, and his boss's face. The silence was broken up by, this isn't what it looks like routine. My friend responded with, if this isn't what it looks like, why was his banana so far inside you? I stood there in amazement and was in a state of shock. His boss got dressed, and I walked him out of the party. The POS even grabbed a roadie before he left. My friend came downstairs and immediately chugged a beer and announced, my now ex-fiancé was caught having close relationship with my boss, and I walked in on them with her legs behind her head. I didn't know she could do that. Usually she lays there like a starfish. Let's get really messed up up. He was kind of a mess for a while after that. Luckily, it was his condo. He owned and paid for both cars. His fiancé just quit her job to be a housewife. Instant karma. Postscript. It took him a year to date again. I set him up with a co-worker of mine. They are great together. The POS boss. Well, he got what he deserved in the end. He was caught sleeping with the wife of the owner of the company he worked for. Fired, and my buddy was promoted. His fiance, well, she moved in with her parents again and had to give up her lavish lifestyle. Last time I saw her, she tried to flirt with me and be playful. I shut that down and told her never to speak to me again. Girlfriends come and go, but best friends only come by every once in a while. Edit. My friend never asked me the question he wanted to ask. Probably best he doesn't. On the subject of grabbing the roadie, I want to like that move so badly, but I just can't. Thanks for the comments and the laughs. Hopefully this story helps you in the future or present. Not sure how, but I hope it does. Fat fest. Story 30. Mine's weird. It's not quite cheating, but it's weird. So apps are a thing in the boy community. A big thing. 
Bars are disappearing, so just meeting someone out and about can be a little difficult for a lot of us. I've had apps for bears, burly, hairy dudes with beards for years now. Chat with a lot of men. Some have become friends. Very, very few have become any more than that. I finally met a guy a few years ago, and it was fine for a while. Got rid of most of the dating profiles. Switched all statuses to taking on the one app I use to connect with friends across the country and overseas. Saw him on the app, and that was fine. I didn't care. He wasn't looking for close relationship or dicking around, neither was I, so it didn't matter. Life went on. A week or so later, he saw me on the app and got wildly pissy about it. We had words. I explained why I didn't want to get rid of it and assured him he could ask for my phone and look through my messages whenever he wanted. Thought we were good. Oh, oh no. Shortly thereafter, someone in town for work struck up a conversation. Really good looking, but I'm taken. That's cool. He just wants to be friends and chat. Fantastic. Having a friend who just wants to be friends is excellent. We talk for months about all kinds of things, and it never gets close relationship. Here and there, a random faceless profile will ask for close relationship. Those folks get told to fudge off because I'm not looking for that. Suddenly, however, new pen pal telling me he's been chatting with a guy looking for close relationship who sounds a lot like the guy I'm seeing. He even points the profile out to me, and while it isn't my dude's profile, they're the same distance from me. The description is dead on, though, so I confront the boyfriend about it. No, no, it's not me. I'd never do that, do that to you, he says. But the description is so close, I can't help but believe the pen pal. Something feels all wrong about this. He also physically kept me from leaving his apartment, which sent up all sorts of red flags. He also sat outside my apartment for a night, and I only found out the next morning because he sent me a text about that. Creepy. Anywho, I stay off the app for a few days, and in the meantime, decide things need to end. Nothing feels right, so I call it off. He cries. There's crying. Everything's tears and awfulness, and he's calling and texting rapid fire. I'm not allowed to break off a relationship, apparently. That's something we both have to agree to. Uh, no, I can end a relationship if I want to. Decide to log back onto the app and shut it down, though, because with him following me, I don't want another way for him to follow me. But oh, look, a message from Pen Pal. It's not your boyfriend. I asked him, and he said it's not him. Don't do anything stupid. I message him back and update him. Weirdly, that account doesn't message me back. Another account does, identifying himself as Pen Pal, who deleted the app but made another profile. That's weird. Why is he yelling at me? Why is he so mad? What's happening here? Why is his profile suddenly showing at the same location as my now ex? Oh yeah, funny thing. These apps allow you to choose whether or not you show your distance to other profiles. Penpal Man and a bunch of the others who tried to solicit close relationship weren't showing distance before, but now suddenly they are. They're all in the same place too. Doesn't matter where I go, if it's work, my house, a friend's house, those profiles are all at the same place. Everything scarily clicked. New pen pal? A catfishing profile meant to get information out of me. Guy soliciting close relationship or hitting on me. All catfishing profiles? They're all his? They're all him? This person I thought was an interesting friend? Nope, just a lie. Contacted the app admins about it, and they confirmed. To date, nine different profiles. He's been stalking me for the last three years now. Story 31. Well, he wasn't my spouse, but he had proposed to me that morning. He said he had to go into work to cover a shift, but when he didn't call me for his dinner break, as he usually did when he worked that shift, I got worried. He was an LEO, and called him. Someone else picked up his phone, explained that the guy whose phone this is, yeah, I think he went up to a room with his girlfriend. We have it down here waiting for him. They were at a hotel. Turns out he used it as an excuse to sleep with another woman he knew from when they were in the academy together and had been seeing each other for a while. She was married. The next morning, when he came to pick me up so we could get our parents to take them to brunch and announce the news, I refused to go with him. In hindsight, I should have waited until we were all at brunch and he had paid the bill to confront him for the free food, but I was young and dumb. Story 32. Went to a tournament in a different city for the weekend and decided to come home early because I had some bad luck and lost. Little did I know it was about to get worse. I arrived home early Sunday morning instead of the evening. Also, this was my birthday and two days away from our four-year anniversary. I came home to find her with another guy in our bed. I never had so much emotion run over me at once. It was like a tidal wave of fear, anxiety, anger, depression, confusion, and betrayal had slammed down on me, and I was drowning in it. I didn't know what to do, so I just said I'm done and left. I went to my mother's house to crash for a few days and get myself together, and when I arrived, I found my mother high on candy with my high school best friend. The tidal wave hit harder this time, and the drowning sensation became more intense. I didn't know what to do at this point and lost it. I punched my once best friend as hard as I could, then just left. I found a real friend who was willing to let me crash for a while. I was emotionally numb for months, feeling nothing was better than feeling something. It was too soon to try and process all that emotion. I eventually got my cow together, though, and I'm in a much better place. I've become a sous chef at one of the nicer restaurants in town and have officially moved out with my girlfriend of one year. Sorry for the rant, and this may have taken a different turn than most posts. 
but something I haven't shared with anyone and figured I should let it out. Story 33. My first long-term girlfriend and I were going to go to the same college. I got accepted, but had to start the semester after she did, meaning we would be slightly long distance for a few months. It wasn't too bad because we were only about two hours apart, so it was pretty easy to visit, but our relationship did struggle a bit. I remember one night I got a phone call from her, and when I picked up, it was obvious it was a butt dial. I could hear her talking to some guy, but couldn't make out what they were saying. I called her and she picked up and I asked what was up. She said she was in bed about to go sleep. I told her about the butt dial and she said it was her friend Jack who I met asking to borrow something. I thought it was odd, but brushed it off. A couple weeks later, I was up there visiting her and I met a bunch of cool people, including this guy, Luke. After I got back from visiting, I get a Facebook message from him saying, look, man, I hate to be the one to say this, but I think you're an awesome guy and you don't deserve this to be happening to you. She's been cheating on you with this guy pretty soon after she started here. I was devastated, but I had to hear it from her, so I called her and said, Are you cheating on me? She gave a heavy sigh and said, Well, at least I don't have to lie anymore. That guy's voice I had heard wasn't Jack. It was the guy she was cheating on me with. I just trusted her so much that I took her word for it. Even though it was painful, I was grateful for Luke sending me that message. What's funny is that most of the people I met up there that were her friends sided with me after the breakup. So when I started going there that next semester, I had a group of friends to support me, and most of them are still very close friends of mine to this day. Story 34. We were talking divorce and officially separated while he was still overseas deployed. He had flown back for two weeks, R&R, and, R, and would head back overseas due to his request to extend his time there. I thought we were going to talk things out, but I picked him up at the airport and he was stone cold. We went back to our apartment and talked for an hour or less, where he said he thought divorce was best and, oh, he had to get going. He was picking up a friend at the airport and staying with her for the two weeks he was back. I was in shock. Fast forward several days later, and I was on his computer printing off a CD label, dating myself here, when the art program showed several hidden files that had pictures in them. The folder was labeled with a woman's name. I opened said folder, and there are saved explicit detailed emails and photos that dated back long before he and I had started having trouble. No wonder he wanted to extend his stay in a war zone. He was banging an NCO under his command, who he had then coordinated to fly in three hours after him so they could run away together after he told me it was over. I never even that coming. Story 35. Things were rough between my long-distance girlfriend and myself, but I wanted the relationship to work so bad. Money was tight, so my parents supported me by partially paying for a ticket to fly over to where my ex lived. A few weeks before I was flying to visit my girlfriend, my best friend passes away, and I was completely devastated. I reached out to my ex to seek some emotional support, but she was being particularly difficult to reach out to. I called her maybe five times in an hour out of desperation. Finally, I get a response with a text that reads, This is her boyfriend. Will you please stop texting her? Eventually, I get an actual text and a call from my ex denying everything. I couldn't confirm at the time whether or not my ex was actually cheating on me, but I eventually found out from her friends that she was indeed cheating on me. This was a few years ago. I'm doing pretty good right now, and I'm in a very happy relationship. But man, does it sting just remembering all I went through that day. Story 36. Not me, my uncle. Uncle got released early from work because they were ahead, and it was Friday. He gets home, goes to his bedroom, and his wife is in the shower. No big deal. Then her phone goes off. Wife works at hospital. Could be important. So he checks the phone. Boom, phone opens right up outgoing pictures of her body to an unknown phone number with incriminating messages. He leaves the house for a few hours, tries to commit suicide. Sleeping pills, two bottles, and a fifth of Hack Daniels. No suicide. Instead, he blacks out. Goes back home and somehow gets his hands on a loaded 9mm pistol. 15 rounds ready to go. About the time he stumbles out of the truck, the wife is leaving the house to get into the car with her girlfriend. Uncle opens fire. Six glancing shots, one shot through the lower jaw. Eight shots into the dirt. The police are called. They roll up on him with gun in mouth, repeatedly pulling the trigger. They handcuff him and take him to jail. He got one year for shooting his wife, and 15, three x five-year sentences, for shooting the wife in front of the kids. 